Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and today I wanted to show you how to set up the cloth dynamics inside of Cinema 4D. So let's get started. First thing we'll need is something to turn into cloth. Now, this will work with most of these primitives and other objects, but let's start basic with a plane. Now, this plane needs a lot more geometry so it can bend and fold just like real cloth. So go to the width and height segments and type in 200 by 200. Now, the new cloth system really calculates pretty quickly compared to the old one, so you can get away with these higher numbers. Next thing we're gonna do is go to our tags, go down to simulation tags, click on cloth, and your plane is now ready to go. In fact, if we hit play, it's gonna think about calculating, and then this just gonna fall to the floor. Now, this isn't so exciting yet, but let's do a couple more things so that we can get some nice folds and bends in our cloth. Rather than this fall to the floor, Let's go ahead and just turn off gravity for now so we could focus on the cloth system. Hit Control D on your keyboard, and it's gonna pull up your project settings down here in your attributes. Go to your simulation tab, go to your scene button, and right here you'll see gravity. You can just turn this to zero. Double click, zero. I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. And now when we hit play, it's going to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> and that's because there's no gravity, no forces, acting on this cloth quite yet. But we're gonna add some turbulence and start to get this moving around. So I'm gonna hit Shift C on my keyboard, and this is gonna pull up our search window. You're gonna see me use this a lot, and you can just type turbulence, T-U-R-B, and there it is. You could hit Enter now, and it'll just add a turbulence to your objects, and uh, there's only a couple more things we need to do. Let's turn up our strength to something like 30, and let's crank our scale to 100, and now let's go over here and hit play. Now we're going somewhere, folks. We got some cloth, it's moving around our scene, and this turbulence is affecting um, our plane and moving it around. So this is the basics. From here, I encourage you to uh, tweak your turbulence settings. You can turn them up or down. If you scale down your um, turbulence, you'll get finer little wrinkles. If you scale it up, you'll get these bigger moves. But now that we have the basics set up here, let's set up a scene and get a final render going. So we're gonna use Redshift to render this. If you're following along with a different renderer, a lot of the basics will remain the same, although some of the specifics will be specific to Redshift. So the first thing we need to do is turn on our Redshift renderer. In my render settings, which you could also find right here in your um, layout, uh, you'll find your renderer right up here. Let's turn this to Redshift. And now this Redshift tab should be available up on the top of your screen. If it's not, make sure you go to Edit, Preferences, scroll down to Renderer, click on Redshift, and make sure that this checkbox is turned on, Redshift Main Menu. If uh, you have that on, your menu will show up. Next thing we need is a camera. Let's go grab a standard camera and turn on the camera. And you can adjust your focal length here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla member, I suggest you use these lens tools. I'm just gonna click on 100 millimeter and it's gonna zoom right in to exactly where I need it. Uh, from here, we also need some lighting. So let's go to Redshift again, go to Lights, go to Area Light. Now, by default, if we zoom out, this Area Light is aiming backwards. We want it to be exactly flipped around. You could rotate it with your uh, rotate tool here. Uh, although if you were a Grayscale Gorilla member, you could also use these rotate uh, buttons right here. So I'm just gonna click this twice to rotate it. I'm gonna grab my move tool and move my light back. And now is a good time, maybe we could just check our render. We have uh, a basic scene set up, we have some cloth, and if we hit play on our uh, timeline, we're gonna start to see it calculate and now we can see the cloth with some lighting and all that stuff start to get set up. Okay, we have some ways to go here, but with this light in the back, we're gonna start to get some really beautiful shadows here on the uh, actual cloth. So from here, let's set up a basic cloth material, and let's uh, just let this play a little bit further so we can see a little bit more detail in our cloth. I'm just rotating around, trying to find a beautiful frame here. So let's fix two things from here. One are these jagged little edges. You can see them in the viewport here and also in the Redshift renderer. Uh, we're gonna fix that and we're also gonna make a basic cloth material. So head on into your Redshift tab again, go to materials, go to materials, and then go to standard. This is gonna create a new standard material. 
open up your material uh, area and you can just drag it right onto the plane. Now, the defaults here are a bit too glossy to look like cloth. This looks more like plastic. And actually, if that's what you're going for, it could work pretty good. I want it more clothy. So let's double click on this material. It's gonna open up our base properties. Now we can come down here to our color and adjust that. We can make it darker if we want. Um, obviously different colors. And then your reflection, you wanna turn up your roughness so that it's not as glossy. And this will make it look a little bit more like cloth here. Um, there's some other settings in the standard material that you may wanna mess with like sheen and also coat. So sheen will give us these nice little edges and uh, coat is something you wanna be a little bit subtle with, but if you turn it on, you'll start to get uh, one extra layer of kind of glossiness that you could then rough up. And this is where you start to get these beautiful close-up cloth textures here. Let's make these jagged edges go away. You can see them here, you can see them over here, and I'm gonna open up my render view just so we could see it a little bit better. And how do we make this go away? Well, we could just throw our plane into a uh, subdivision surface by holding Option and clicking on subdivision surface. surface. This is fine, this will work. However, it slows down your calculations. Um, and we wanna avoid that. We wanna keep our simulation as fast as possible. So instead of subdivision surface, we're going to use a redshift tag to add more geometry during render time. So head on up to your tags, make sure your plane is selected. You wanna come down to render tag, click on redshift object, click on the redshift tag, go to your geometry tab, turn on override, and then finally turn on tessellation. Boom smoother geo without slowing down your viewport over here. That's the point. And you really don't need all these extra subdivisions. You could turn this down to something like three and this will be fine for this setting. And in other times you may wanna turn that up. But for now, this looks good. So now we have uh, beautiful cloth wrinkles. It may still be a little bit too glossy. We could tweak that. Um, and we also are going to set up a little bit more of like an art direction. So let's go back to our first frame and let's set up more of a close up here. And we have our nice light going in the corner. And as soon as we hit play, you're gonna start to see, uh, let's turn off the viewport just so we can see the wrinkles. You're gonna see this whole thing start to crumple into a little ball and then almost it almost like disappears off to the side of the, um, uh, frame here, but I want to control this a little bit more. I, I don't want the whole thing to start moving. I only want this center point to start wrinkling and this is going to slow it down and give us a little bit more art direction, be able to uh, tell the cloth what we want it to do rather than just let the turbulence take over. So in our turbulence, we're going to go to fields. We're going to go to spherical field. And now what's happening is the turbulence is only being affected in the middle of our cloth. If I shrink this down a little bit, and again, I'll turn this off, I'll hit play. Now you're seeing it's pulling in. All the wrinkles uh, are coming from the center out because it's really only affecting the middle and the outside of the cloth is just being tugged in from this turbulence. In fact, if we go back into our turbulence settings, we can go to our object and uh, we can turn down the scale and up the strength and get even more of this pulling. And we could also extend our timeline a little bit. I'm just dragging on this number to turn it to 207 or just something higher. It doesn't have to be 207. Uh, and now when I play, it's just giving it more time to kind of calculate. And this looks way cooler. Let's hit play. And now we're getting somewhere. Um, for this material, I would adjust a little bit more of that sheen. I would turn down the sheen and turn up the roughness. I would also go into your reflection weight and just maybe tone that down. And you can set up some other lights to get rid of these um, uh, dark areas. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and set up uh, some better HDRI lighting. And I'm also going to use a uh, material from the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library that makes beautiful cloth. You can see we have a bunch of different cloth and fabrics here inside the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. Uh, in fact, if I just type fabric, 
I'm going to find the Speaker Fabric 01, which has been really fun to play with with the new cloth system. I'm just going to drag it on and replace our other material. And bam, check that out. That looks great. The scale is a little bit large. So let's select that material and go 50-50 in our length on our U and V. That's just going to scale it down. And again, if you're uh, not a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can just use that other material and tweak it. But this is looking super great. I'm going to adjust my camera here. And now I want to fix, uh, I love this shadow. I love how dark this is, but I don't want it all the way black. I, I want to see a little bit of detail there. So for that, let's go to Redshift. Let's go to Lights. Turn on a dome light. And by default, a dome light is just all white. We want to change that. Uh, if you have HDRIs, you can click here and find an HDRI and put it in your dome light. Uh, if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, just drag texture into drop zone, and it automatically will add um, HDRI to your dome light ready to go. Uh, now all we have to do is just tone down the intensity, and let's just pick a different HDRI, something with a little bit more color. Let's go to our HDRI tab. And I love these modern industrials for this type of stuff. They usually have these nice light walls. They have some big windows in there. These are nice, 10, 11, 12, modern industrial 10. Let's try this one. And maybe we just need to brighten this up, back up a little bit. There we go. See these subtle little details are coming out now. This is what I want. I just don't didn't want it to be pure black. Okay, from here, uh, let's add a little bit of background just so we have some light to bounce around. For this, let's go to Grayscale Gorilla menu and go to the LightKit Pro Plus and go to Psych Types S-Curve. The S-Curve, let's just zoom out here so you can see what's happening. The S-Curve is a studio curve here. Uh, I just need it to bounce a little bit of light and also just have be a backdrop for my camera. So I'm just going to move it down. And I'm going to grab my scale tool and scale it up. And from far away, you can see that's not quite as great as after we zoom in. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's replace this cloth. And now that we have some light bouncing around, we may not need as much of this dome light. There we go. And I'm going to hit G on my keyboard just to progress my frames to get a little bit more cloth. And now we're talking. All right. So what do we do from here? Well, let's go ahead and adjust our camera so that it is getting a little bit closer to our object. I think our area light is a little bit too bright, so let's go to our exposure and turn that down. And then let's go to our dome light and turn this up just a bit. And our S-curve, we can just move down even further because we don't want the light to really make it too too bright. We just want a little bit of subtle background. Now we're getting somewhere, folks. Let's turn up our turbulence. And also let's duplicate our turbulence and make two different turbulences. I'm going to grab our turbulence, hit Control C, and then Control V. That's going to make a second copy. The spherical field came along, which is good. We want that to stay. And we're going to scale down the scale something a lot smaller, maybe 10, 20%, and turn the strength down. This is gonna give us more of these fine details. So let's hit pause on our render view, and let's start from scratch here. Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, we got some awesome movement here. Let's hit pause, and let's hit render and see what we got. Beautiful. I wanna add a little bit more strength to our large turbulence, just so it really clumps up in a bigger way. Well, again, uh, anytime you want your simulation to run faster, just pause your uh, IOR and let it play. And then go in and see what it looks like. This is looking way better. Let's uh, undo that. Let's zoom in and see if we can't find a beautiful camera angle, something more like this. Oh, yeah. That is looking pretty good. So we have the backdrop. You can see this material is actually a little bit transparent, so we could see through it to the floor. Uh, in this case, I want to darken the floor a little bit to get rid of some of the, this brightness. So if you ever need uh, to just add a really simple material, you can go to Create Materials, uh, or you can go to um, the Redshift Materials, Material <laughs> Standard. I love saying that twice. Let's add this to the S-curve, which is our floor. 
already it's looking better. Now we're seeing through to the floor just with a little bit of um, kind of grayness there, and it's not so white, and it's really more focused on this background. So I'm, I'm digging this uh, a lot more. And I think I just have to tilt my redshift light a little bit to let some light in down here on the floor. So to do that, let's just turn off our redshift camera, zoom out, and now we can go click on our redshift light, which is over here. Let's grab our rotate tool. Let's kind of angle it down a little bit more. And now when we go back to this light, uh, we should get, there it is, see that? That is now just a little bit gray instead of pure black. And I love these little gradients. This always helps make the scene a little bit better. Um, and so now it's just a matter of uh, making sure that your camera is placed in a way that it's getting very beautiful cloth movement. So this feels like a good place to start. And maybe we just zoom in here and tilt it a little bit more to get that light play. All right, let's pause. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, baby, beautiful. Uh, one last thing before we are ready to render and see what this looks like. We want to add a, just a little bit of thickness to this cloth. If you look at this on an edge, uh, let's just rotate this around. You could see that it is pure, like paper thin, not even paper thin. It is infinity thin because a plane has no thickness. Well, we have uh, something to the rescue here. Go ahead and hit Shift C and type in cloth. And you want this green one here, cloth surface. And all you have to do is drag your plane into the cloth surface. Now we don't need any extra subdivisions, so you could turn that off, but we do want thickness. Let's click one just so you could see it working. One might be a little bit too thick, but now let's zoom in right here where all these little wrinkles are. And you can see now we have, um, we have thickness on our cloth. So dial this back. Uh, to taste and to whatever type of cloth you're trying to replicate. In this case, it's at least half as thick. Beautiful. That is much better. Now let's go back and set up. Actually, that's a really cool camera angle, but I do like this backlit look. Let's go back here and see if we can find a beautiful frame to kind of frame up for our scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As always, we could sit here and tweak these final details because the lighting, the camera, the materials are always the most important part of your scene to make it go from looking regular and boring in 3D to something that looks real, to something that has intention, to something that has emotion. So I'll encourage you to play around more with your lighting, uh, try different HDRIs, try moving your light around. But if you're ready to render uh, and you're happy with a frame here, of course, uh, all you have to do is go to your render settings and to render an animation, make sure you go to output. You could adjust your output here. I'm just regular old widescreen. You can go square, whatever you want. And then down here under current frame, you wanna make sure you go to all frames and then uh, may, and then you're ready to go. You can adjust your redshift settings by clicking on low, medium, and high. If it's your first render, you could just knock it down to low just to get it faster. But I think we're gonna have something pretty beautiful here. So you could just um, set it to medium and hit render and you are ready to go. Thanks again for watching everybody. And if you have any questions about the new cloth system, make sure you throw it in the comments below. We love hearing from you. And also, if you're new here at Grayscale Gorilla, consider subscribing. We have a ton of videos like this to help you make more beautiful renders in 3D in less time. Thanks again for watching everybody, and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.